It is a relaxing Sunday morning here in the Snow Kurt apartment. But we're going on an adventure today. Vanna's playing because the, the birds are on the TV, so she's always excited about that. She does. And when we're leaving the apartment for a while, we like to leave the YouTube on so she has little birds to play with. But on the wall here in our apartment, we have two pictures. Palermo, which we've told y'all a lot about, and San Telmo, the oldest neighborhood in Buenos Aires. Let's go on an adventure. What do they have there on Sundays? They have a giant market. Let's go. Streets are quiet here on a Sunday morning. And one thing about our new neighborhood, it's not super hard to find a cab, but there are not near as many as there were at our old apartment. So we gotta walk around and find one. So it took us four or five minutes of a walk from our apartment to find a road busy enough to get a cab, but we did. And then the cab ride over here was maybe 15 minutes, cost us 1,200 Argentine pesos, which is $4. But now we're here at what's supposed to be a really cool market that only happens on Sundays. Let's go check it out. Okay. Uno? Yes, Okay. Welcome to St. Elmo. No, wait. St. Elmo's Fire? Oh, Santa Elmo. Santa, Santa... San Telmo. San So we've already shown you a couple things that are popular here in Argentina, but something is definitely a Mafalda, and so it's a comic strip of a little girl, and it's sort of like a modern culture. I think she's like about the environment, protecting the environment and other things, but in any event, she's very popular. We haven't read any of her comic strips yet, but you can see there's several booths with Mafalda. And you can see this line right here. It's all a picture of people waiting to have a seat with Mafalda <laughs> on the park bench. Right up here, you can even buy a little figurine of this bench with her on it. <laughs> I'll tell you what, here in Buenos Aires, it definitely feels like spring is gone and summer is here. It's been getting up in the 90s about every day. The humidity levels come up, so it's gonna be a warm day, about one or two. But a lot of these booths are still setting up. We got an early start this morning, so that's good news. All right, it is a cooker, and we are have retreated to some air conditioning for a snack, and more than anything, just to relax and get out of the heat. So I've seen them make these little metal things out of the wire, sort of like on Instagram or TikTok or whatever. Look at all these little cool designs. Wow. So he's making one now? Oh, is he making one now? Oh, he's making a guitar.
Oh, the Alho Forays. I've been telling you about these alajores here in Argentina. And this store specializes in them. You can see all of the kinds they have. And I think what makes these things special is the dulce leche that they put inside of them. But another day we'd be digging into those. Butter Queen Red Velvet Malbec which is a famous wine from right here over in Mendoza. Oh, I gotta get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Look at these cinnamon, Nutella. All right guys, we gotta get out of here before we eat all of these things. I have had some for the record, the Alifores, and, and to be honest, they're too sweet for me. I don't really like really super sweet stuff. I'm lucky in that way, but Back in the day, Snow would devour those. But they're off limits. And here's another store right here, right next door, that's full of these designer treats. All right, look, Estado Sunidos Street. And right here on the corner is a Japones restaurant, a Japanese restaurant, and a Argentina artisanal cerveceria. <laughs> We have made it to the entrance of Mercado San Telmo, the year 1897. All right, there's a bunch of what looks like old historical knives and daggers. There's even an old clarinet there. Some old watches and timepieces. And this neighborhood right here this market is supposed to be full of antiquities and not too far in we're already seeing a pretty big selection it smells good in here and that means there's food <laughs> I wonder if we should try to find lunch or maybe we could get one of these gas masks <laughs> telescopes all sorts of cool stuff Old cinematography stuff. All right, I believe this down these stairs right here is where we get into the food court area. I can see lots of benches and little restaurants. And although it looks fancier than a lot of the markets we've been in in Latin America, nonetheless, people are in benches lined up for food. And here they have a bunch of empanadas which empanadas are another thing like media luna sort of the half croissants that are pretty much served everywhere but this place is really unique and cool look at the fancy food i believe they call this korea and it looks like you can get grilled squash zucchini all sorts of grilled vegetables that's a place where snow might be able to find something she can eat as I'm telling you, she should not be eating this sweets under glass here. But, wow, what a beautiful marketplace. Look at this. I want a big, fat, juicy rib. <laughs> and I can't have it. But at least I can smell it. I wish you guys could smell it. This place is crazy cool. And one of the reasons is you can see the grilled meats behind this. But obviously Argentina is famous for its grilled meats, having delicious meats. And they are here in full spectrum. Sky 
eyes are sure to follow It happens every time You're my silver lining Daydream, never mind And light inside my eyes A little bit of everything I like You pick me up when I'm down Put that sunshine on me now Make me dance out in the rain Whoa, oh, oh, oh. Whoa, oh, 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 oh You make every day a dream come true With every little thing you do Each memory you're creating Full of imagination Coca-Cola Antiques in Argentina. <laughs> uh, Queen, Super Tramp, Jimi Hendrix. Just a few little pieces they have on the albums here. On the vinyl, Joe Crocker. Wow. The Beatles. All right, if you look down on the bottom there, we got some old pop bottles, some ashtrays. All sorts of pots and pans. I believe, I don't know, you guys correct me. I think they're ceramic covered. <laughs> Look at this phone. Now, this phone is not that old. Some of you will probably think it is, but. <laughs> wow. This is definitely the area of antiques. And it's quite telling. Oh, look, a dial phone. All right, the music is loud, but Snow has found a place. She wants to have a little snack. We're gonna have lunch, St. Joe's. I think I can get vegetables and chicken, and it looks really yummy. So Pinchos, for those of you who don't know, is skewers, and so it looks like they've got a lot of vegetariano options. Is that a salad or is that chicken in there? No, they had no chicken. So, so a little vegetables. And it's good. Well, look at this healthy market lunch for snow. Wow, what's the red stuff? Like a beef I salsa? Think so. I think so. All right, guys, that was a delicious was. meal. We met some cool other travelers, too. That's always fun. But it's time to get out of this building because it's a little steamy in here. Definitely steamy. San Telmo is the oldest barrio or neighborhood in all of Buenos Aires. It was founded in the early 1700s, and it used to be called, I believe, San Pedro. I could be wrong on that. But in the 1800s, they changed the name to San Telmo, which is the saint of the seafarers, so for the sailors. The reason they did that, there's a lot of reasons. They went through a lot of economical distress and everything to get to that point. But a lot of the sailors called this home. And then it also turned into the place where they made bricks in the ovens the old way. We've showed you that throughout the Andes and those small rural communities the brick kitchens, and also they did a lot of leather work here. And bricks and leather were huge export commodities for this part of Argentina. So they've done a really good job of preserving this area. It definitely you can feel that it's old. And they've also combined it with the tourism, which is pretty cool. And I believe that market we were just in, it's open seven days a week, and it was early 1800s, I believe, that it was mid 1800s that it opened. And then the street vendors that we showed Joe, they only set that up down here on Sundays. Cool neighborhood. Okay guys, I wanted to pop in here, take a few minutes of this video to give y'all an update on how my heart's doing and my health and all of that. Uh, 
coming up next week, we have some pretty important tests we're gonna get done. It's been two, almost two months since we put in my defibrillator and did the other two stents. And I've been taking uh, nine heart medications uh, for the past three months. So the tests that we will do next week are going to show us two things. Is my heart regaining any strength? And uh, there's something called an ejection fraction. Uh, the normal person has an EF or ejection fraction of around 60. When I first went to the emergency room, I was at 16. When I was in Florida and went to Shan's hospital, I was around 25. Uh, if all was to go perfect in my world, I will have gained a little more strength. We'll have to see, but that's one way to see if my heart is gaining any strength. Now in reality, it hasn't been that long. Some people do start to regain strength within the first month or two. Uh, some people it takes six months or a year or two years and then some people never regain strength. So that's one thing we'll be testing for and keeping our fingers crossed for. Uh, the other thing will be very intense blood work to make sure my kidneys and my liver are tolerating all of these medications. Um, I don't have any side effects and I feel fine, but the blood work will show for sure. And in that blood work, there's also a number that will be able to kind of tell how hard my heart is having to work. So that's another factor. So we'll be doing those next week. And I have to be completely honest with you, I'm nervous about them. I really want to be one of the fortunate people that have good results. Uh, not just don't get worse, but improve. But of course, we'll be happy with not getting worse. And uh, that's that. Now, how have I been feeling? We've been showing you on the videos that we go out on adventures and we do fun stuff. And we are, we're having fun, but to be completely honest with you guys, I still get tired really easy. Uh, and I haven't shared much of that with you. There's some days I don't feel like leaving the house, so we don't. Um, of course, Kirk can go and do and have his own adventures, but some days I just, I just need to stay home and rest. I need to try to walk every day though, so we do try really hard to get some exercise in every day, but every day is not going to be a big fun adventure going forward. But saying that, I am able to get out and about. It looks like we've been able to do two or three cool things a week without wearing me out too much, but it's something we have to pay attention to and that kind of sucks. It makes it difficult to plan because I can't tell you if tomorrow is going to be a day that I'm really, really tired or a day that I feel like going and doing. So planning adventures has been difficult. The heat. The heat has made it where I do get tired faster. So being in really hot climates, we're going to have to pay attention to that. Uh, I can definitely tell my heart is not strong and beating normal. When I am out walking about, my arms get really, really tired, especially if I try to carry anything, a grocery bag that only has, you know, a pound or two of stuff in it. If I carry that, it really just wears me out. Uh, and from the reading I've done online, that just means my heart is not pumping blood good enough. So the blood's kind of not getting to my arms because it's going to more important places like my core and my legs and my brain. So there are things we're dealing with here, but I can go and do. I can see fun things. We can go and have adventures. So it's okay. We're going to be able to make the travel work. But I wanted to just take a minute and be honest with y'all and tell y'all that uh, mentally and physically, this is something that we're still dealing with and we'll deal with forever. The good days, the bad days, happy days, depressed days. But I will be happy to get all of these tests done over the next week. Uh, the stress test, I have to do a cardio stress test, has me a bit scared. Um, 
and then we'll meet with Dr. Arias and we'll get the verdict. But that's kind of where we're at, guys. So, if you haven't gone and got your heart tested, checked out, visited your doctor, do that. Because if you can keep the damage from happening, it's good. Hi there, buddy. Oh, he's a pretty boy. Look at that. This is the neighborhood kitty. He lives down there with the butcher. <laughs> but we are... It's date night. <laughs> we are walking, I don't know, five, eight, ten minutes away to what online on the Google looks like a really fancy sushi roll place. I like sushi rolls. So... We're headed out and about, but I wanted to pop in and tell y'all, yesterday, it was like 95 degrees and 10,000% humidity. This morning it was warm, but then, what is it, like 70 and cool? Yeah, it's cooled down, it's nice. It's crazy weather, how hot it gets and then how it'll cool down. But uh, I don't think we're quite in the heart of summer. I think they would probably still consider this spring here. Let's go on a little walk to the sushi place. Turns out we are at a fancy sushi <laughs> restaurant. Reservations and all. <laughs> so first off, that was a Peruvian Asian restaurant and the second Peruvian like sushi yeah. place we've eaten at. It's like a fusion type thing going on here. Yeah, so that was really good, but unfortunately the music was playing so we couldn't tell you about it while we were in there. But there was lots of cool stuff on the menu, including five different veggie rolls and not just your typical veggie rolls with avocado and cream cheese. These got crazy cool, like with green beans, carrots, uh, pickled onions, sweet potato crunch, just a really cool variety. So I tried three different ones and they were all really good. Of course, we started with a padro of limonada. And I don't know if I've told you guys that here, the specialty is they put ginger and mint in their lemonade. Yeah, that's pretty typical here in Buenos Aires and the lemonada was really good. Yep. So what'd you get, Kurt? Well, as I said, it was Peruvian. And if you guys remember when we were in Peru, one of the dishes there was lomo saltado. Mm -hmm. We first had that at Goka. It was delicious, loved it all throughout. So I had the lomo saltado, it came with uh, papas and rice. And lomo saltado, for those of you who don't know, is lomo fino, which is basically strips of filet mignon with onions and peppers. And these were Chinese like spring onions. So it was really, really flavorful and tasty. tasty. And then I also had like a tuna, tuna sushi roll. And so it yeah. had some shrimp. It was called the Pacific Roll, and that was off the charts as well. I so, think maybe our best meal here. I'm gonna say that was definitely the best sushi that we've had here for oh, sure, yeah, and yeah. it was a tasty meal. It was, but now back to the apartment. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys.